show me. As Kung Fu cinema fans, we recognize Sammo Hung as an irrefutable icon of Hong Kong and Kung Fu cinema. He has done everything there is to do in the industry, solidifying himself as one of the greatest directors and on-screen talent in the world of Kung Fu, and I mean, if we're going to give him a bit more credit there, let's just say film in general. I've even recently been thinking that an argument could be made that Sammo Hung may be the greatest of all time. Giving Samo Hung goat status is not really an easy feat. It's not like picking a goat in sports. Every other sport pretty much has somebody that you could pick as the goat and almost everybody will mostly agree with you. Michael Jordan, goat. Tiger Woods, goat. Jerry Rice, goat. Tony Hawk, goat. Shawn Michaels, goat. And I don't know anything about baseball, but I have seen Sandlot a lot of times, so you know. Benny Rodriguez, GOAT. The 80s Hong Kong scene is not like sports. The names coming out of that era go on and on and just achieve nothing but greatness. Samo Hung grew up in the same Peking Opera School as Jackie Chan, Yuan Biao, Yuan Hua, Corey Yuan, all of those decorated names in the industry, and then you start throwing in other prominent names from Hong Kong in different eras like Lao Kar Lung, Chang Che, Yuan Wu Ping, Jet Li, Jimmy Wang Yu, Donnie Yen, Michelle Yeoh, Bruce Lee, T Lung, etc. And just from that, let's call it, short list of names, you can see why picking a goat in Hong Kong and Kung Fu cinema is a bit difficult. Every era of Samo Hung is replete with brilliance. His days as a stuntman, maybe getting a line or two, his small roles alongside Angela Mao, his directorial and starring vehicles in the late 70s that helped kickstart the first wave of the Hong Kong New Wave movement. Movies such as Knockabout with its wall-to-wall -wall fight scenes. <laughs> Magnificent Butcher's final duel with Hoi Sang Lee. <laughs> or that thrilling fall from the clock tower by Jackie Chan in Project A. His team-ups with Peking Opera School brothers Jackie Chan and Yuan Biao revolutionized Kung Fu cinema and pushed the new wave movement into its second wave. Eastern Condor's stacked cast and incredible action. <laughs> Wheels on Meals final 20 minute spectacular. And Millionaire's Express representing the best Kung Fu cinema had to offer. Many of the films from this time period are still recognized as the untouchable benchmarks of action cinema. One cool thing I like about his work is that you can appreciate it for so many reasons. His action typically relies on martial arts over stunts, incredible fight scenes peppered with thrilling stunts. This is a result of his time choreographing kung fu movies throughout the 70s. So, if you love Jackie's fights with Benny Urquidez in Wheels on Meals, and Dragons Forever, <laughs> Then you have Samo Hung to thank. He gave Yuan Biao some of his earliest leading roles in Knockabout and Dreadnought, leading to an incredible career full of fantastic films. 
His brand of choreography screamed Sammo Hung with the devastating impacts and blistering speeds. And you could perfectly see it evolve from Warriors 2 to Skinny Tiger and Fatty Dragon. Whether he was on screen or behind the camera, and typically it was both, he provided some of the best action you could find. But what I appreciate so much about Sammo Hung is that when the time came, he was fully willing to pass the torch to the next generation. As the 90s rolled through, Sammo Hung kept leading films and directing his colleagues like Jackie Chan in Mr. Nice Guy and Jet Li in Once Upon a Time in China and America. And like, can we just stop and think about that for a second? Sammo Hung directing Jet Li is just a glorious image. I know he also directed him in Kung Fu Cult Master, but God, that's just a powerful combination. In 1999, Sammo gave America a try with the TV show Martial Law, but despite being full of some awesome action, it was canceled after just two seasons. Upon his return to Hong Kong, he took it upon himself to give back to the next class. He started taking on minor roles in films like Zhu Warriors alongside Ji Yi Zhang and Louis Ku, and The Avenging Fist with Stephen Fung and Ji Ji Lung. But into 2005, Sammo Hung went full Mick Foley. For the Kung Fu fans who don't like wrestling, I'll go ahead and explain. As most viewers of this channel know, I really enjoy comparing the film industry to the wonderful world of professional wrestling. Mick Foley, or Mankind, or Cactus Jack, or Dude Love, was one of the biggest stars of pro wrestling during the Attitude Era in the 90s, the biggest boom period of professional wrestling. Similar to the 80s and the new wave movement going on in Hong Kong, Mick Foley has had some of the biggest matches against some of the most popular stars the professional wrestling world has ever seen. People like Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Triple H, Undertaker, people whose names are so big they've surpassed the wrestling world. They are mainstream. Similar to Samo Hung coming up in an era with names like Jackie Chan and Yuan Biao. I know that Yuan Biao isn't exactly known throughout the world, but Jackie Chan may be the biggest star in the entire world. Let's also throw in Yuan Hua and like Billy Chow, just incredible talent in an incredible era. He was beloved by fans thanks to his death-defying style and the risks he took with his body. Again, more similarities to Samo Hung and the things he would do to himself. And I suppose Jackie Chan did too. And Yuan Biao did too. And Yuan Hua did. People were crazy in this era. When it was time for Mick Foley to hang it up, he put over two rising stars in WWE, Edge and Randy Orton. In both matches, Mick Foley beat the hell out of them in crazy matches under hardcore stipulations. Chairs, tables, flaming tables, thumbtacks, barbed wire, baseball bats, whatever they wanted to do, they did it and it was awesome. He helped create matches that made Edge and Randy Orton prove to the fans that they could hang with one of the most dangerous performers in wrestling history. In the end, Mick Foley helped build two of the biggest villains, the biggest bad guys, heels, in professional wrestling. This is exactly what Sammo Hung did in 2005. In 2005, Sammo Hung played the villain in the dramatic action film Shapo Long, or SPL. And, well, most of us really just call it Killzone. Sammo Hung's ruthless crime boss looms large over the film before the spectacular final battle against Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen wasn't exactly a new star. He began his career in the late 80s, but even through the 90s, never truly had that career-defining role. Yes, In the Line of Duty 4, Tiger Cage 2, and Iron Monkey are classics to many of us, but he hadn't yet surpassed the stars that came before him. Until his clash with Sammo Hung in Killzone. Killzone isn't the most interesting movie. It's very slow, kind of depressing, but that final clash between Sammo Hung and Donnie Yen is one for the ages. The two go at it in a brilliantly brutal showdown that sees Donnie Yen implement mixed martial arts against Samo's Kung Fu. When Donnie Yen comes out on top, it was a statement that Donnie Yen was finally in the same league as the very best who came before him. The next time the two would star in a film together, they would do so as bitter allies in Ip Man 2, a film in which Samo puts over Darren Shalabi, 
A villain worthy of Benny the Jet, Billy Chow, or Dick Way. What better way to make your villain look like a threat than killing a legend? In 2008, Sammo Hung did it again, this time pulling an Undertaker. Now I know I don't need to explain The Undertaker to you, he is one of the most famous, most popular, greatest professional wrestlers the world has ever seen. And in the early 2000s, he made a fan favorite look like a million bucks. Jeff Hardy was always known as a tag team competitor. Alongside his brother Matt, the two won championship after championship. When Jeff earned a shot at The Undertaker's undisputed title, he gave him one hell of a fight. The Undertaker promised that by the end of the night, Jeff Hardy would be left lying on the floor, unable to stand. But Jeff Hardy took the fight to him in an incredible ladder match. And in the end, The Undertaker won. The fan favorite lost. But the championship was never important. Jeff had to prove that he had what it took to stand in the ring with one of the toughest men the WWE had ever seen. He had what it took to stand one-on-one -on -one with the champion. After the match, The Undertaker kept punishing Jeff Hardy, trying to keep his promise that he would be left lying on the floor. But even after all the damage, Jeff got on the mic and he said, I'm still standing. The Undertaker got back in the ring, considered beating the hell out of him some more, but he couldn't do it. He raised Jeff Hardy's hand to tell the people that Jeff Hardy was all right, that Jeff Hardy was one tough son of a bitch. I talk about this match firstly because I love it. It's one of my favorite matches ever, but it perfectly is, it's the perfect combination, the perfect comparison to the final fight of Triad Wars. The 2008 film Triad Wars stars Sammo Hung playing a similar character to his role in Killzone. He is also joined by Wu Jing, who is incredible and also starred alongside him in that film. In Triad Wars, the two have a similar relationship to their previous film. Wu Jing is a general lackey criminal, you know, uh, the, the right-hand man, the first big fight before the bad guy. The film, sadly, is a tad mediocre, with most of it really being quite forgettable, except for the finale. In the final battle of Triad Wars, the two, Sammo Hung and Wu Jing, are in a warehouse surrounded by the cops, and Wu Jing has decided that if he's going to go out, he wants to go out fighting his boss. Sammo Hung with a pole took on the younger Wu Jing with his sword in an epic, fast-paced weapons brawl. <laughs> It's so good, it almost redeems the whole movie. Almost, it doesn't. The movie is still... Just look up that fight on YouTube, don't watch that whole movie. Wu Jing is fully holding his own against Sammo Hung before eventually falling to the legend. But just like Jeff Hardy losing to The Undertaker, Wu Jing comes out of this film having proven to anyone that needed convincing after the amazingness that was Fatal Contact that he had what it took to take the reins of Kung Fu cinema. Sammo Hung has continued to support the new classes of Kung Fu stars over the years. His supporting role in Once Upon a Time in Shanghai with Philip Ung and Andy On, returning to the world of Wong Fei Hung and backing Eddie Pang in The Rise of the Legend and hanging out with Dennis Toe as a young Ip Man in The Legend is Born. And one of my favorites, an underseen film called Wushu. In Wushu, Sammo Hung plays the master to a national Wushu team. Similar, I guess you could say, to Ric Flair in Evolution, passing on his wisdom to Randy Orton and Batista. Sorry, I had to get one more in there. The fights in this movie deserve so much more credit, and Sammo Hung gets to throw down in an awesome finale. Sammo Hung is undoubtedly a legend. Any martial arts or Hong Kong film fan knows that if you want some of the very best action this world has to offer, you go to Sammo Hung. His career is long and decorated and consists of so many movies that I haven't seen a few major ones. 
And that sucks because just because you've seen, you know, two of Sammo Hung's best really doesn't mean you've seen it all. You know, I had seen a majority of the Three Dragons films. I had seen Millionaire's Express, Eastern's Con Eastern Condors, and so many, many more, but I hadn't seen Warriors 2, and when I finally got to it, it blew my mind just how good that movie is. And that's ridiculous when you've already seen films that are regarded as legendary. And that's just about every Sammo Hung movie. Entertainment and a mastery of what makes an action movie I wanted to say great, but great just isn't the right word. Incredible, amazing, spectacular, extravagant, I don't know. All of these positive, big, five-letter words. I know those words had more than five letters in them. Five-dollar words. I don't even... They're ten-dollar words. His movies deserve thirty-dollar words. I don't know. They're amazing. And when it was time for Sammo Hung to let someone else take the lead, he was fully willing to get in the passenger seat and let them drive. So, for whatever my opinion is worth as a huge kung fu nerd on the internet, Sammo Hung deserves to take the top spot as the greatest of all time. But what do you think? Who is your greatest of all time? I'm sure for many people it is Jackie Chan, and I understand. I really do. But as someone who's just been watching a lot of Sammo Hung movies over the past few years, you know, of course you're caught, you're also watching your Jackie Chan films, but those Jackie Chan movies are the ones you make it through when you first become a Kung Fu fan. Eventually you want to start diving a bit deeper, and you know, you don't have to dive that deep for Sammo Hung, but you realize that Sammo Hung has a lot of movies, and you just have to keep diving deeper and deeper and deeper to watch a lot of them. Tell me all those things in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Head over to Facebook, where there is the Martial Arts Film Freak Facebook page, Instagram, Martial Arts Film Freak, Tristan underscore Glover on the Twitter. I think there's also an underscore after Glover. And uh, Martial Arts Film Freak on TikTok. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good day. He gave Yuan Biao some of his earliest leading roles in Knockabout and Dreadlot. Mm.